Oh, hi. I'm Mallory Everton from JK Studios. Have you wondered what's up with JK Studios? Are those guys on quarantine? Yes, we are. Look at me. Are they okay? What's up with those rascals? Well, I can tell you. In fact, if you're up for it, I can show you. Take my hand. And I'll take you for a ride. Da -da 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 Put better music here. Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to properly care for your beard. Now, what is a beard? Webster's defines a beard as hair that grows out of your face, I'm assuming. The first thing you're going to need is a beard. I would recommend growing one out like mine. All right. I'm just gonna, gonna slowly get it wet. I'm gonna take off my glasses because take some beard wash right here. Put a little bit in, in your hand, in your palm, kind of like that. And then we start to put it in. We put it in the hair. So we wanna make sure that it's fine. But also, when you have a beard, a lot of times uh, the skin on your face doesn't get the attention that it needs. And so it's good to kind of massage it in and just kind of make sure that the, the skin underneath gets washed as well. I might need more. All right, now we're taking care of the washing of it. But uh, just like here, sometimes you gotta give it that little extra step and moisturize it with some conditioner. And so, that's what we're gonna do. Make sure that you get it in there. And this is really nice and refreshing. It's got a nice mint uh, scent or chemical makeup. I'm not quite sure what the right word is, but all I know is I like it. Here's the thing. We gotta let it sit for about five minutes for it to do work its magic. One thing I've learned when I'm waiting for my beard to moisturize fully and be conditioned is uh, it's a great time to learn some songs on the guitar. Well, I've been growing my beard for about a year or two. People say that I look homeless. I say, how do you do? Okay, now it's time to rinse out your beard. So, let's do that. Now that we've done that, uh, the last step We've got a nice, clean, fresh, conditioned beard. Um, while it's still damp, we can put some beard oil in it. So we just put a few drops in uh, right here in, in our palm. Mm -hmm. And you can take some excess oils and just run through your hair if you want. The final step is to brush or comb your beard. You can use a regular comb, uh, but I have a sandalwood comb that I really like, or this brush, this is a boar bristle brush. This is nice because, as I said earlier, the the hair on your face covers your skin. This can get down through your hair to your skin, help exfoliate some of that stuff, and also help you brush, brush, brush your beard. And there you have it. Sometimes you look like the lady from the ring video. The key to surviving a good quarantine, I would say, is structure. You know, kids really thrive under structure. We're stuck at home, so we have to we have to get like creative with foods, right? Well, some of us do. <laughs> some of us are eating oatmeal raw out of the bucket. But I, Stacy has, you know. So here are the rules. I'm gonna pick two things. Okay. Adam's gonna pick two things. Okay. And then you get to pick two things. And from those six things, you have to make something delicious. It just has to be better than raw oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it Mr. Chef. Because he's no master. <laughs> yes. And who's gonna eat it? We are. We, we will try. Including you. We will. You, have, you, have to, yeah. you can't set us up for failure. Okay. I do kind of want to be like looking at his expression. <laughs> Can we talk about what's here? Frozen chicken breast, rigatoni, top ramen chicken, which I know is the worst flavor because I went to Walmart last week and they were sold out of everything but chicken. <laughs> Peach raspberry fruit spread. Premium uh, chunk chicken breast from Costco. This is not getting chosen. <laughs> reduced fat Jif creamy. Oh, reduced which... fat? Why? <laughs> it's 
somewhat yellow cauliflower. It, it comes in different colors sometimes. <laughs> I feel very exposed as people are seeing my food. <laughs> I want the peach spread, and it does not sound like it would pair with anything. I do feel like peach spread with this would be kind of like, what in the world do you do? I was gonna say, it's the worst of both worlds because I'm not a big peanut butter fan, and it's reduced Oh wait, <laughs> I'm allergic to peanut butter! <laughs> it doesn't stop them though. It, it often doesn't. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead, we're in quarantine. I'm gonna go ahead and be. choose one of mine then. <laughs> I'm just <kidding. laughs> I am gonna go with the rigatone. Okay. Like, I don't even begin to understand how these two things <laughs> can be okay together. Okay, diced tomatoes and green chilies. I'm not a big seaweed fan, but I don't hate it. Yeah, I'm okay. throwing the seaweed. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do the summer sausage. Let's live a little. I'm gonna choose the cauliflower. So the ingredients are rigatoni, seaweed, <laughs> summer sausage, rotel. Oh, do I wanna do rotel? I mean, I picked it. I don't have a choice. I guess cauliflower and peach raspberry fruit spread. Just to clarify, right? I could use any seasoning and any like oils or fats, right? Right. That's for cooking. Okay. Right. Oh. Just slap a steak right on top of whatever you're making. <laughs> it's seasoning. Yellow cauliflower. I mean, it's not. I didn't buy it yesterday. As a kid, I used to sneak in the kitchen when my mom was cooking and I used to season food behind her back. I have memories of her being like, get out of the kitchen! <laughs> And I'd have it like a salt and pepper shaker. Like, hm, hm. Oh shoot, am I gonna make all this cauliflower? Why not? It's old. And by old, I don't mean like rotten, I just mean like not as fresh as it should be. Rigatoni. <laughs> what I was thinking is I could be like really bougie, like cool seaweed in it. Fancy rigatoni. <laughs> be curious, Miss. It might be your last feast. <laughs> oh yeah, you see our shirts? It's because we were wearing. Gunky pajamas. <laughs> Enough summer sausage for the day. Ooh. Said no one ever. It's gonna add some flavor. What I will do is season the pasta with a smidge of olive oil and some lemon. That ish has got to slap the taste buds and can't mess up your digestive system. Okay, done with the pasta. Little stuffed pieces. I am really happy with how that looks. Look at that. Garlic is brown, man. After basil, oregano. Ooh, not bad. So we can make like a topping on that cauliflower that's like, mm, like meaty but sweet. All right, fellas. Woo! Get in here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what we got. Lightly roasted and wrapped summer sausage and seaweed stuffed in the pasta. Did you stuff it? Like individual. I did. Oh my <laughs> that's what that's what took so long. <laughs> Topped with a tomato reduction. <laughs> and then on the side we have a roasted cauliflower. I'm gonna start with the cauliflower. I think I wanna start with the cauliflower too, because I feel safer eating it. <laughs> Southern roasted. <laughs> that cauliflower is way good. Oh is it? <laughs> yeah. It is good. It's oh different. Gosh. I don't think I've ever had something I quite like it. It's got a, a lot of sweetness to it that I really like. Okay, I'm gonna go for the, the, yeah. the other thing. <laughs> the main <laughs> thing. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big seafood fan. I'm more of a ham to seafood fan. Yeah. I really like this. I can, oh, really? <laughs> I can tell I that it's... <laughs> this is that surprisingly good. <laughs> not like forcing myself <laughs> to eat it. It's good. So if you guys had to give me like a grade, one out of 10. I'd give you like a nine, but I'd give the cauliflower like a 10 and the seaweed like a zero. <laughs> it all tastes really good and it shouldn't in my opinion. It's 10, it's, yeah. how do you? Is cooking easy? <laughs> You're not just being nice, are you? No, I no, know <laughs> I'd be like, okay. To me! Everyone put your mouth like, on the same cup. My hands have been like all in your food and stuff. The problem is, is my hands are already dry as all get out and they've become rhino skin with washing them so much. It's like freaking rawhide paws. 
Do you know how cool he made boots out of these hands? Do you know how much he's been self- <laughs> <laughs> You better watch your back, Gordon Ramsay. Oh, Gordon, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Alright, I think we're done. Oh, uh, he ain't never half cocky, a faithful shooter. Cool as ice to weight on his shoulders like Rick the Ruler. What up, guys? It's the Dark Knight here, and yes, I too have been practicing social distancing. Just because I'm, you know, Batman, doesn't mean that I am above COVID 19. It is nigh impossible to fight crime and keep within six, a uh, six feet distance. So I've just decided, you know what? Come what may, I need to be a responsible citizen. Plus, COVID-19 was started by a bat. Well, technically by a guy who ate a bat. I think we can all learn a lesson here. Don't mess with bats. Okay, hey everybody, Natalie here. My kids are in bed and I have decided to learn TikTok for you all. I'm a I want to say there's maybe five TikTok dance moves and it's like this. There's like this one where you go like front, back, side, front, back, side. Okay. There's another one where you're like this and you kind of like go back and forth like I'm a savage. That one. And then there's all these dances where you just like do the moves with the words. You know, like it's just like I could have, my toddler probably could have come up with that dance. It's confusing. It's really strange to me. There's really famous people on TikTok for like going like this. Like that's what they do. And they're famous. Oh, here's a good one where you just go. Arm, arm, shake it up, clap, and then you walk away and guess what the person behind you does? thing. Am I too old for TikTok? But there's one that's actually kind of fun where it's like two in one. I'll do it right now and then I'll put it in the video. How about that? Go! Oh, baby don't give me some play, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm a savage. Classy, bougie, ratchet. Mm. Sassy, booty. Coronavirus! Adam Fauci is onward. Le petit un petit un. Let's see if they know my voice. Yo, what it do, ladies? Where my girls at? Oh, there they go. Where my girls at? Where my girls at? Come on, girls. Come on. Where my girls at? 
Hey, skeezer. Come on, girls. One, two, three, four, five. We're missing one. Come on, girls. Where my girls at? That's my call for my chickens. Hey, guys. Just spending my quarantine taking up new hobbies. I've been watching the Great Pottery Throwdown. So this is a little pottery tutorial. I've never actually done pottery, but I bought myself a cheap little pottery wheel on Amazon. I'm gonna show you how to make some pottery. I'm gonna show me how to make some pottery. This is called a wire. Get yourself a nice chunk. We're gonna start what's called wedging. Shoot, don't mind me. Uh. Guys, I'm all by myself here. And it's just been hard, you know, being at home all the time. Three littles, so close together. Just really wanted some, some hands-on things. Then you smack it, you smack the clay. Okay, you're supposed to bang it in the middle to make sure it sticks. And then it helps to turn it on. Something that I've heard, you need to get your hands pretty wet. Getting our hands dirty. Guys, it's happening. I'm a potter. I'm potting things. Oh no. They use mosquitoes. You pull it up. <sighs> Obviously don't know anything about what I'm doing, but I'm basically just trying to pull it up right now. I know you don't want a heavy bottom in life or in pots, because then it'll explode. In life and in pots. Once you got it all centered, you're ready to put your thumbs in. You don't want to go too far down. No one wants holes in their holes. You spread your thumbs outward. Guys, I'm making something. I'm making a pot. I'm probably using way too much water. Guys, I got something. Am I losing control? Easy, girl. Easy. There we go. I don't want to alarm anyone, but my bowl's getting very wobbly. Okay. Okay. See what's happening here? I made a bangle. It's all right. We can start again. We can start again. Is that a real song? So I was going to make a bowl, but I think what the world needs more of is cups. Son of a bee sting. Guys, jokes on them, because I have hypothyroidism. You can't get it by drinking my blood. I wish you could. I have a lot of chubby, cold mosquitoes out there. <laughs> I can tell that the top of this cup is gonna fall off soon if I keep spinning. A little wibbly wobbly. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I don't know when I'll be able to fire it because you need a kiln and those are a couple thousand bucks that I don't know. So help me, these bugs guys. If I am dead in my garage tomorrow, you all know who did it. I think I'm just fussing with it now. I mean, it's looking a little uneven, but it feels good to just get your hands messy. I'm gonna take this thing. I'm watching. I don't know what it's called, but it came with my pottery kit. And I'm going to make an incision. And that's where I am going to wire it off. Moment of truth. Did it pull through? Woo! Okay, don't tell Steven. There's my little cup. My little cup. Should I make a handle? So this is called pulling. We're, we're working with what we got. Put that on here. And we want it to fit the joint. Because I don't know about you, but I drink out of this cup. I think I made a cup. Look at that cup. I mean, the handle might be a bit heavy, as Keith would say. But look at that. Made a cup. Now I gotta clean up my wheel. 
See you later. Uh, uh, I can't turn it off. Maybe with my nose. Hi, all. I just wanted to bring you all in to my morning meditation during this very unique time. Okay, so we're just gonna do some deep breathing. Okay. Deep belly breath in and out. <laughs> and then you do that just 10 to 300 more times and just I tend to feel way better. I usually fall asleep right afterward. I just roll over right here and I go to sleep on the floor. think of any fun how-to's for this, but I did notice on my bookshelf that I have uh, the Worst Case Scenario Survival Handbook, which has all kinds of really fun how-to's. And I thought maybe I would read one of them to you, and we would learn something together. I'm gonna choose one that I've never read before so that it'll be, you know, new. Oh my. How to perform a tracheotomy? Do we dare? What you will need, a razor blade or a very sharp knife. Oh my goodness, a straw. Two would be better, in parentheses. <laughs> I can't think of a situation where two straws wouldn't be better. Oh boy. Boo. Oh! Not today. <sighs> How to deliver a baby in a taxi cab. Okay, babies. Before you attempt to deliver a baby, don't. Before you attempt to deliver a baby, use your best efforts to get to a hospital first. <laughs> well, that doesn't evoke a lot of confidence, does it? What about home births? There really is no way to know exactly when the baby is ready to emerge. So guess. So even if you think you may not have the time to get to the hospital, you probably do. A lot of confidence. Was this written by a woman? I'm betting it's not. The water is actually the amniotic fluid and the membrane that the baby floats in. Oh my. Time the uterine contractions. Babies basically deliver themselves. Oh, great. And they will not come out of the womb until they are ready. Because they're divas. Have clean, dry towels, a clean shirt, or something similar on hand. I'm guessing you're not going to have a lot of clean, dry towels in your taxi cab. Okay. If the feet are coming out first, see next page. The most common complication during pregnancy is a breech baby. Since the head is the largest part of the baby, the danger is that if the feet come out first, the cervix may not be dilated enough to get the head out afterward. Ah. See, I had always heard that feet first was a bad thing. I just never knew why, and I guess never asked. Today, most beach, most breech babies, they're beach babies. They come out tanned and ready to play volleyball. Breach babies are delivered through cesarean sections, a surgical procedure that you will not be able to perform. <laughs> How dare you? What if you really need to? Can you use the taxi driver's license to perform a cesarean section? The people need to know. We're jumping back to head first birth. Do not slap its behind to make it cry. The baby will breathe on its own. I'm getting the sense here that the baby does not need me. It just needs a clean, dry towel, I suppose. As the baby moves through the birth canal and out of the mother's body, guide it out by supporting the head and then the body. You're just there to support. The baby is doing all the work. You, well, I guess the baby and the mother are doing all the work and you're just there to support. Just take your clean towels and shut up. Tie off the umbilical cord. Take a piece of string, a shoelace works well. We are MacGyvering this childbirth for sure. And tie off the cord several inches from the baby. I have heard that there could be benefits to um, not 
cutting the umbilical cord immediately, but letting it go for a while. I don't actually know if that's true. Can any doctors in the audience weigh in? Actually, based on this, the babies are doing all the things, so can any babies weigh in? Babies, comment below if you think umbilical cords should... <laughs> it is not necessary to cut the umbilical cord. Aha! Unless you are hours away from the hospital. Okay. In that event, you can safely cut the cord by tying it in another place a few inches closer to the mother and cutting in between the knots. Have you ever cut an umbilical cord? They are quite rubbery. And now you're wondering, has Matt delivered a baby? Did Matt write this book? Leave the cord alone until you get to a hospital. Just leave it alone. The piece of the cord attached to the baby will fall off by itself. And then the baby has committed its first act of littering. The placenta will follow the baby in as few as three or as many as 30 minutes. Oh. And now we are certified to deliver babies in taxi cabs. Here's the thing that should comfort you if you ever have to deliver a baby. You were once a baby. And according to this, you're like driving the train there. You can just tell the doctors, it's okay. I got it. I was a baby. This is the time of day where I decide if I want to um, exercise or door dash a cheeseburger. So Winnie and I have been stuck inside a lot together with three babies who are all asleep right now. One of the things that brought us together the most when we first met was um, her quoting a movie. The quote was just obscure enough that I felt really, really proud that I got it. Um, she, we were doing some sort of dance or something and then somebody said, okay, let's do that again. And Whitney said, one more time. And I looked at her, I was like, it's one princess. And she's like, yeah. And um, that, is when we fell in love. So now we're going to keep up that game. We're gonna be doing the, the movie quote game, but not just any movie quotes. They have to be obscure enough that the other person has to think about it. Winnie. I'm in pain. Rifle goes away. <laughs> An American tale. You. Your turn, you have to give me a quote now. A great animal. Swamp Princess. I already did the intro. What? I didn't know that. Aha! Uh -huh. A pretty little girl. I'm a treasure island. Yes! Billy Boy. <laughs> Much too good for children. <laughs> Are those too good for children? <laughs> You don't give our children any of them. <laughs> Joanna! Did you take one of my eggs? Uh oh. Rescue is down! Rescue is down! No! Are you positive? Only fools are positive. Are you sure? I'm positive. Oh! I fell for it. I should have known! My name is Batty. No, no, no. <laughs> How about a packet of Nutty Buddies? Aladdin and the Prince of the King of the King of Thieves. Yeah. <laughs> You've been a good guard, Nicholas. Strong and fair. Your queen would be proud. I'd like to reward you with this chocolate kiss. Oops. Butterfingers. <laughs> Piece of cake. Piece of crumb cake. Casper. Dang it. How about... Who told you? They don't know that one. Ah! Easy, eh? Oh. Yeah. I was thinking they're childhood movies. We're tired of sneezing. Go away. Oh no. <laughs> yes, you did. 
don't let it matter. It's you do this voice all the time. Yes, you, know. yes, you do. You've seen it. Never ending story. Yes. Really? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't think I've really seen it. It's been a long time. Well, you haven't seen it already? I've it's seen it. We've it's... seen it. No, we fell asleep. I've made you. What? We fell asleep. I would never. I've got the first watch. I don't remember this one. I'm not an air marshal. Okay. Bridesmaids. I've got the first watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. We sure love you guys, and we hope you're staying healthy and safe and inside, face covered and hands washed. And now, let's all go to sleep. I have no idea what time it is, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs>